now we want to estimate the model and forecast the future so say you have a data set so now you will have two series y1 and y2 and the first thing you want to do is you want to determine what is the lag length so just like in an auto regressive process you want to find out what is the lag length so here you have two series y1 and y2 and the lag length will tell you you know by how many lags y1 is dependent upon itself and how many lags is dependent upon y2 and uh, this can be done in R there are four information criterion which actually tell you the first one is Akaike's information criterion which is called AIC then there is Hahn and Quinn HQ the Schwarz criterion SC and there is uh, one called final prediction error FPE so we will run these four criterion on uh, say these two series y1 and y2 so for our purpose we will use y1 and y2 as the ones we simulated in the last lecture so this is uh, everything is in the R code so this is our input matrix so the input matrix is has 500 uh, observations and uh, for two variables y1 and y2 so our information matrix or the matrix which we are going to input looks like this it has two columns y1 and y2 these could be the prices of your favorite commodities and we have past data of 500 values so notice that you're fitting in time series so you have taken the usual precaution of taking out the trend and taking out the seasonality factors from this so basically whenever you put time series in the first thing is that you have to see whether your data has trend or seasonality you take it out so for these two prices y1 and y2 of your favorite commodities you have already taken out the trend and the seasonality and this I have shown you in my previous lectures how to do this so first thing is I'm going to change the column names to y1 and y2 so give them specific column names so that we can uh, do the prediction accordingly and the first thing we do is we check the lag because once we know the lag only then we can fit the model so this is the check lag it is done by var select and uh, this check lag will spit out criterion AIC, Hahn, Quinn, Schwarz criterion and final prediction error so let us see this and we will find that the lag is 2 so what we have we have this var matrix which we produced in our last lecture so this is how it looks like there are 500 values and say these are prices of two commodities so this is just uh, some random values right now so y1 and y2 okay so now you have these two values so the first thing you want to do is uh, you just change the column names to y1 and y2 then you check lag and let us do this so we run this and you see that AIC is two lags HQ gives you two lags SC gives you two lags and FPE gives you two lags so all three of these criteria give you two lags each and uh, therefore you take number of lags as two so we are testing uh, for maximum lag three so you can put lag four here also but we are testing for three lags so that the machine runs faster so now we got to estimate the model and we are going to put P as equal to 2 so we are going to estimate the model uh, the input matrix is this var matrix which is this this is 500 by 2 matrix P is 2 the number of lags is 2 and uh, we have already, already taken out the seasonality so this is the model and then we are going to estimate the model so the model will come out and then we will have the summary so let us do this so these are estimate model commands we are just going to find the summary of the model also let us run these three so you run it you get covariance matrix uh, for y1 and y2 so this is our uh, results so this is the result for first coefficient y1 so y1 lag 1 is 0.61 so what we fed in was 0.6 y2 lag 1 is minus 0.3 then you have lag 2 lag 3 so notice that these are different from what we 
initially fed in. In fact, every time I simulate a new war matrix, you get different lags and you can, uh, we can write this down in an equation and the constant comes to be 5.1. So notice that the constant we started with was four. So you have 5.13 here. And uh, the different lags change slightly. They get slightly perturbed every time I run it. Uh, so let us see for y2, you see the the uh, standard we started with was 7. Point, uh, the, coming here is 7.8 the constant, but we started with 4.7. And uh, then again, you know, 0.4 we started with, this is coming as uh, 0.43. We started with minus uh, 0.2. And so these values are coming out. So let us uh, write these values. Uh, and so this is the value which I ran in the previous simulation. So you get, uh, so first variable 4.38, 0.39, 0.14, 0.39, 0 0.62, and the error term. So these are pretty close to the values which we started with, but these are not the exact values we had for the simulation model war mate. Now the idea is this, that why these are not exact because of these correlated random errors which we feed into the matrix. That's precisely why it doesn't come out to be the same. Similarly for YT, what what you estimate is slightly different from what you put in. But these are our estimated uh, estimated uh, results for these variables Y1 and Y2, which we simulated according to the previous lecture. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So some values will come close, some values will not come uh, very close. So you can you can run this many times and you will get different values. So let us run this again. So first we have this variance matrix. We run again this entire thing. So you have a different variance matrix now because you have simulated every time. Then you can again do check lag. The beauty is the check lag always comes out to be correct too. And then you just estimate the model again. So again you will get uh, value so again the constant was coming to be 7 it is now coming 6.6 .6. uh, so we fed in point 0.1 for our original lag for y2 this is coming point 0.14 similarly we fed in point 0.6 this is coming to be point 0.63 so this y1 is uh, xt and uh, this is yt so basically what you do is you bas uh, print this out and uh, write it down so as to see and you will get again a matrix somewhat like this. So every time you run it, the values will change because when we simulate this war mate, we add uh, errors to it. So this is it. Now we do the roots. The roots we expect to be less than one, otherwise uh, this entire thing will blow up. So let us do the roots. So roots are less than uh, one. So these are not roots essentially, these are eigenvalues which are less than one. Uh, the roots we expect the modulus of roots to be greater than one so these are eigenvalues and uh, these are less than one that means the model is stable and that you can see in prediction so we predict 20 days ahead so now we are predicting 20 days ahead with confidence interval of 95 percent so let us do this so you have predicted 21 days ahead so you have two variables this is y1 this is your forecast as i told before the forecast is absolutely useless because you will never get the future predicted values what you are interested in is the probability so the probability is that the future might will be around 10 uh, but more important is the confidence interval so the confidence interval says that you know most likely the values are going to be between 8.6 and 13.04 with 95 percent probability probability of being 10.85 is zero so it will be around 10.85 it will never be exactly 10.85 but this confidence interval is more important so this tells you that you know this is what your values will be on day one they will be between 8 and 13 day two again 8 and 13 in fact these confidence intervals uh, are not changing very much see this is 8.290752 and then it becomes 8.290 804 it depends upon what values you started with what prices you fed in so if you feed in higher numbers these will change slightly but it gives you an idea that uh, things are changing in fact uh, so the confidence interval is 5 4 here it becomes 3 3 2 9 
Now again, important thing to notice that this is just the time series. You're not talking about seasonality here. Or so if the season changes, this is not going to give you the correct confidence interval. You have to add the seasonality aspect to it. Also, if the demand is increasing, this is not going to give you the correct interval because you have to add the increasing trend to it. So this is just after taking out the uh, trend and the seasonality. This is only for the stochastic part. So you have to add back the trend and seasonality to it. So this was variable Y1 and then this is variable Y2. Again, don't worry too much about the forecast. You shouldn't add any importance to this number. More importantly, you should say the forecast would lie between 11.6 and 15.68 with 95% probability just for the time series part. And then if you actually want to predict the actual values, then you add the seasonal part, which is a constant. And then you add a trend part to it to get the actual confidence interval. So this is uh, Y2. And uh, that is it. This is how you simulate. You can find this in the description of the video.